it's Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to do a well to introduce my weekend vlog. I thought it would be fun to vlog this weekend. It's the first weekend of August and we are out at our camp at the lake and I am going to be reading um, The Secret Diary of Henrik Grohn, 83 and a quarter years old. This is a um, a book where this gentleman here is living in a uh, basically a not a nursing home but the next step below that assisted living type facility it's written as diary entries so for a whole year one day one entry for each day he's describing what it's like to live in this um you know assisted living facility what it's like to be old what he fills his days with um different concerns that elderly people have about life it's written with a lot of humor and a lot of poignancy i'm only about like 25 pages into it so far. I had meant to read this for um, the summer school readathon in July. Never got to it. This was going to be my math, <laughs> my book for the math prompt. Um, so I thought that I would try to uh, read it this weekend because it's, while it looks long, it's a quick and easy read. So let's see how I can do with it this weekend. <music> Sunday morning, August 2nd. I thought I'd do a brief check-in and let you know how I'm getting on with um, The Secret Diary of Hendrik Groen, Groen, I think it's Groen, 83 and a quarter years old. So this book I've neglected to mention um, yesterday when I was introducing it that it was originally published in the Netherlands and has been translated. Let's see if we can find the translator's name. Hester Velmans is the uh, translator, and um, I just wanted to mention that so that uh, if anybody's looking for some translated fiction to read, this is one that you could put on your list to check out. Um, I had originally gotten interested in it. I think I heard a couple of booktubers um, that I watched talk about it. Um, Amy, I think, Amy Poole, and I also think uh, Jen may at Remembered Reads, maybe I heard talk about this. I can't remember for sure. Um, if you were the one that talked about it, remind me down in the comments below. Um, and this book sounded something like A Man Called Uva, which I absolutely adored. That is the book by Frederick Bachman. It's quite popular. I listened to that one on audio, um, and I wasn't able to get this one on audio, but um, I found this one at, I don't remember exactly where I found it at a, I don't remember if it was at the library sale last year or if I found it at a Goodwill, but I got it used anyway. So I was excited to find a copy of this one. And I read to about page 102 yesterday. Didn't get much reading done. As you've seen from the clips, we've been quite busy um, here at camp this weekend, but uh, I did enjoy very much what I'm reading. So it starts off, like I said before, this is diary entries, one entry for each day in a whole year. Um, and it starts off quite, um, gloomy. Uh, Henrik is depressed. He doesn't know what the point of living is anymore and he's quite discouraged living in this uh, 
assisted living facility, old age home, whatever you want to call it. Um, but since then, he has struck up a friendship with a group of other uh, people who live in this retirement community. Um, it's not really a retirement community. It's more than that. It's more of an assisted living facility. And so they've, um, we're not dead yet club. That's what they've formed. And they're going out on excursions um, and getting up to things and, you know, just having a good time. And it's just delightful and very funny and poignant and also points out a lot of things that are wrong with how we care for our elderly today in the modern world. And um, I think that's so important to think about and to understand and to sort of interrogate how we do take care of our elderly and what we might do differently or better. So excellent so far. And I plan to continue reading with this today. <music> everyone it's Monday August 3rd and I just want to wrap up this short reading blog by um, saying I finished <laughs> Henrik Groen the diary of Henrik Groen 83 and a quarter years old um, I was up a lot in the middle of the night last night with insomnia so what better time to finish a book than when you're up a half the night with insomnia so this ended up being a very charming read I really enjoyed it um, and everything I said before stood throughout the book. The only quibble I had with it was there were a couple of moments where um, there were a few little things that made me uncomfortable um, where, but it would, I could explain it away by saying this is narrated from the point of view of somebody in their 80s, um, which, you know, they have a different cultural perspective than we do in terms of things like fat shaming or, um, what we consider racist uh, commentary. Um, and I don't think that this book was racist at all. I don't want to make that impression. But I think some of the uh, commentary, especially about um, body size, is very um, cringeworthy, I guess I would say. And there were a few moments where I thought he was being racist in his thoughts, but instead he was being ironic and sarcastic and calling other people out on their racism. So in the end, um, I do give it a few little minor ticks off for the body uh, commentary, body shape commentary that he made. So anyway, successful read for the weekend. Um, and this book, as I had said before, was the last book I was able to pick up for the summer school readathon. A little bit late, didn't get in, in didn't get it in in July, um, but this was for my math prompt, um, and I just wanted to quickly run through the books that I read for the summer school readathon and which prompts I read them for. Um, I talked about this book in a previous video. This is Letters from Yellowstone by Diane Smith. I read this for the English prompt because it is a book written in letters. Um, it's an epistolary novel. Uh, the two main um, narrators are. Um, Alex, who is a young female botanist, and um, Professor Mer Merriam, who is uh, the leader of an expedition to Yellowstone. And they're each writing about their time 
um, doing their scientific work in Yellowstone in the summer of 1898 um, while they are developing a relationship with each other. And it was absolutely charming. The nature writing is amazing. Um, the historical perspective of science in this time um, in the American West, just delightful. I really enjoyed this book very much. Then for the science prompt, I read Trace by Lorette Savoy. I've talked about this one um, too in a previous video. This was a nonfiction book uh, written by an African-American author about the connection between science um, and history. Uh, she is an intersectional person. She's Af her um, intersection are African-American, Native American, and white European. So she reflects on her racial background in terms of geography, science, um, politics, history in the U.S. And I thought it was very well done. Then for the social studies prompt, I actually read two books. Um, I finished my latest presidential biography. This is Destiny of the Public, Destiny of the Republic, A Tale of Madness, Medicine, and the Murder of a President by Candace Millard. This is about um, James Garfield, who was shot by a would-be assassin, a man who was very much um, not in his right mind. And probably James Garfield could have survived the initial gunshot wound, but the medical treatment that he was given basically killed him because he had seven or eight different doctors that all examined him and they each shoved their dirty fingers into his gunshot wound. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, this book is actually really horrifying to read because you realize like this was a totally survivable injury. And because people didn't believe in germ theory, these doctors, American doctors particularly, didn't believe in germ theory. Um, does that, is that ringing any bells for anybody right now? Yeah. Um, the president died in a very horrific and painful and lingering way. It took him like two months to die. Um, and by all accounts, James Garfield probably would have been an amazing, amazing president. He was shot within a few months of becoming president. And he was just a really good man and probably would have been a really great president. And so not only is it a tragedy for himself personally and his family, but it was a tragedy for the nation. Um, wrapped up in this story is also the story of Alexander Graham Bell, who is racing to basically develop the x-ray um, that would allow, not the x-ray, but a, a machine that would allow them to find where the bullet was. Because in this time, you couldn't just take uh, imagery of the body and find the bullet. So he was working on a piece of technology that would have allowed them to find the bullet. And he does, I won't give it away, but that, that I mean, it is historical, but I still won't give it away. <laughs> um, but that is that storyline is also wrapped up in the storyline of the president um, and what happens to him. This is very, very readable presidential biography. If you're interested in presidential biographies, but they all seem dry and boring and dull, um, this is not too long and it is it is definitely narrative nonfiction um, and I highly recommend it. Additionally, for the social studies prompt, uh, a book that I read for the Book Two Prize, A Woman of No Importance, The Untold Story of the American Spy Who Helped w Win World War II by Sonia Purnell. Um, I'll talk more about this in my Book Two Prize wrap up, but uh, this was also very good. And then for my elective, I read a book for health class in the US. When you uh, are in high school, you, at least in my state, um, you have to take a half a year of health class. And um, so I chose to, for this prompt, I read Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb, again, for the BookTube Prize um, during the month of July, um, which is all about a, a lady, Lori Gottlieb is a therapist. Um, so it's about her work as a therapist, but also about her going to therapy after a breakup. Um, and it was really a great book. So that one was highly successful and fits into the prompt for my elective, which was health class. Um, for the research prompt or a topic that I wanted to learn more about, uh, I read The Second Amendment by Michael Waldman, which was a nonfiction book all about the Second Amendment. Um, really very well done. I buddy read that one with Patrice um, and we slow read it over the course of the month. It's not very long. It's only like 200 and 40 pages or something like that, 250 pages, I can't remember for sure. 
Um, but it's a deep dive into how the Second Amendment, which is the amendment that is the, um, the right to keep and bear arms, that's the second half of the amendment. The first part of the amendment um, is about having a militia. And then the second part is about the right to keep and bear arms. So um, the Michael Waldman goes back to the early days of the founding of the United States and what the founding fathers were thinking about when they developed the Second Amendment and how the Second Amendment has changed, our thinking about the Second Amendment has changed over time. I thought it was really well done. It's a very um, even-handed nonfiction. Uh, I did not find it to be particularly biased one way or the other. Waldman is giving us the legal and historical background of this amendment and how actions of the Supreme Court, especially in the last um, 20 years, have really changed our thinking in the United States about the Second Amendment and um, how that's been driven by um, people who are uh, gun rights uh, proponents versus people who are gun control propon uh, proponents. So super interesting if you're interested more about um, you know, the evolution of uh, the amendments in terms of the Bill of Rights. If you're interested in the hi the historical context around the Bill of Rights, it's a really good book for that. If you're interested to learn more about how we sort of got to where we are currently in the U.S. talking about gun control and gun rights, um, really great uh, book to read, I think, to inform yourself more about that topic. So definitely uh, enjoyed that one. And then for Common Core, I didn't complete my two books. That was the one where you were supposed to pair a fiction and a nonfiction about um, two topics. So uh, I did read one half of that. I read the, the nonfiction half um, in A Buddy Read with Doris. I read The Orchid Thief by Susan Orlean. I've talked about this in a previous video as well. This is excellent sort of deep dive into um, the world of orchid collecting and this in particular this one man who uh, got caught stealing uh, orchids from a state preserve in Florida um, which is illegal and um, so the author follows this guy around for like a whole year or something a long time anyway uh, follows this guy around for a long time and just deep dives into his background how he got involved in um, selling orchids, growing and selling orchids. And then we also learn about orchid biology. We learn about sort of collecting of plants and other exotic animals, um, the history of that and the sort of the um, industry around that and the immense amount of money and time and effort that are spent to by certain people to collect rare and wonderful orchids. This book was just a wild ride super interesting there's also a whole bunch in here about the seminole indian tribe and sort of their development um since uh contact with white europeans and what you know how their tribe has um dealt with that and just really really good i um would recommend that and i was going to read unsheltered by barbara king Solver as my pairing because they both had plants on the cover um but I just never got to it. So, and I wanted to uh, basically wrap up my summer school readathon, and I thought this little vlog would be a good way to do it as I read that final book um, that I was going to get to. All right, I hope you're all doing well and finding some good books to read, and I will talk to you later.